I'm Jerry Baker. I'm the deputy editor in chief of the Wall Street Journal, uh, based in New York. Um, and it's my pleasure to be here this morning with um, uh, someone you all know very well, uh, Professor Michael Porter of the Harvard Business School, um, who is uh, one of the most eminent uh, academics in the area of business uh, economics. So, um, uh, Michael, thank you again. Uh, just tell us, first of all, if you would, the corp there's been such a lot of discussion about corporate social responsibility over, uh, over the last decade or more now. Mm -hmm. Um, but tell us, you, you've, you've got an improvement on the idea of corporate res social responsibility. Can you just tell us a little bit uh, about the idea that you have been uh, pondering and, and, and how you came to uh, develop the, uh, uh, the, the, the insights that you developed as a result? Well, well let's start with the basic idea, Jerry. Um, the, the basic idea, of, uh, which we call creating shared value, is about actually applying the capitalist model to addressing issues in society. Issues like hunger, issues like environment, issues like water, issues like health. Um, and and, and, and I, I want to be clear, applying the capitalist model. Creating shared value is pure, unadulterated capitalism. It's about making money. But the idea is that, that actually there's no artificial need to limit the way to the way you make money just to kind of the conventional needs and the conventional mainstream you know kind of consumer benefits that companies have been trying to create that we can open up our thinking about creating economic value by understanding that there's huge opportunities for companies to have fundamental impacts on almost all the major issues in society and so the idea here is is actually to get capitalism working uh, not against the interest of society and the community, but actually integral to addressing the problems of, of society and the community. Now, there's a lot of things we can talk about, but rather than go on and on, I'd, mm -hmm. like, to, I'd like to make this a dialogue. Yeah, well, how does it differ? I mean, we're, we've heard a lot about corporate social responsibility. There's been an acceptance that companies <coughs> somehow have something beyond the immediate profit motive uh, as a, an obligation. Yeah. But, but so how, how, how does what you're proposing differs from that? Well, I, I think, I think we're, in, we're in a sort of a logical progression. Um, I think that CSR was an effort uh, in companies to be responsible. That, that word responsible uh, is, is a very important word. The idea is companies have a responsibility. They need to be good corporate citizens. They need to contribute to the community. Uh, they need to uh, comply with community standards. All those things really make up corporate social responsibility. And all that is correct. Uh, uh, all those things are important. Uh, but ultimately, uh, that, uh, th that motivation for companies uh, is separate from the core of their business. Uh, companies should be good, they should be generous, they should take money from their capitalist activity and invest it in this other stuff. The idea of, of shared value says that, no, 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 that, there's, there's a bigger opportunity. It's not taking money from capitalism and investing, it's actually rethinking how we practice capitalism. See, I think the original CSR idea uh, was, was sort of do no harm. And a lot of companies set out to kind of see if they could reduce the harms they were, they were, they were producing in, in a variety of ways, environmental harms, uh, safety, you know, accidents, uh, uh, things like that. Um, the idea of creating shared value is, is not, does necessarily, is not necessarily possible for every company in every situation, but it, it's not about actually reducing harms, it's about actually uh, creating value. A value uh, for uh, a social issue, but at the same time uh, a business model that, that, that leads to profit. CSR is fundamentally about redistribution. Take, uh, from, the, take from the prosperous and, 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 and donate. Um, uh, and, and that sometimes is the only way to solve some of these issues, and sometimes that's, that's necessary. But the CSV idea says, no, 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 that's probably not going to ultimately succeed because there's only so much you can give. Um, what if you could re-engineer the way you do your business so you could actually create a business model uh, to, to, to get uh, drugs to lower income people in, in rural areas, for example? Then you have the magic of capitalism at work. Capitalism is where all wealth is created. There is no wealth created by government. There is no wealth created by NGOs. It's where all the wealth is created. When business makes a profit, magic happens. We're not saying that every company in every situation in every market for every aspect of their business is going to be able to create shared value. But, but if it opens its thinking, uh, uh, it, what we find is, is companies can stretch their markets, stretch their consumer, uh, differentiate themselves in completely different ways, and frankly, operate their value chains in a fundamentally different way. Remember, we used to, uh, you know, I, I remember, uh, you know, not very long ago, 
uh, when people in business thought that being environmentally uh, responsible was expensive. Hmm. Uh, and, and that's the old style mindset, that there's a trade-off between a social agenda and, and a business agenda. Now we're kind of understanding that, that companies can save massive amounts of money by saving energy and using resources better and thinking hard about packaging. And it's not about philanthropy. It, it's not about being a good guy, you know? It, it's, it's about actually doing business in a smart way. So this shared value idea is just a way of opening up business to thinking about new ways of designing and developing and marketing their products and also uh, operating business. And, and the trigger for it, the pull for it, the tug for it, is to, is, to, is to think about how a company can actually itself impact issues that have traditionally been defined as social issues. Capitalism has been doing this forever. Yeah, this is my point. It's been it doing it forever, but, but, but we've got, we got stuck in many businesses in a very narrow view of how to compete, of who our customer was. Uh, of, of how to serve that customer well, of, of, of how to operate a, a supply chain. We got stuck uh, because, and we didn't understand all the opportunities that we were kind of leaving on the table. Let me just, I'm just trying to figure out, because uh, my point is that, yeah, that this, is what cap this is how capitalism has developed, you know, looking for uh, needs that are out there and mm -hmm. seeking to supply those needs yep. at the same time by uh, uh, gaining profit from doing it. And that's, that's, how the, that's how the world has developed. That's how the world works. For 100 years. But at isn't least. it interesting that capitalism has a bad name Right. and is viewed as dangerous for society. Right. But and that's the trigger here. We, why would business be seen as working against the interests of society? And, and, and I think the, uh, at least the conclusion that we were reaching is that business was, was not understanding its power to actually benefit society. Isn't there a risk though, this is, um, that, that, it, that if companies ex go out of their way I and mean, explicitly seek <coughs> social, look, look for um, opportunities where there is seems to be social need mm -hmm. and where the primary motivation is the fulfillment of that social, is the mm -hmm. filling of that social need, mm -hmm. that actually they will not be successful companies, they won't be successful companies that, that, because they won't be profit maximized. That, that's absolutely a risk, but remember what I said at the beginning, creating shared value is pure unadulterated capitalism. If you can't make money doing it, you shouldn't do it. Then it becomes, then it becomes part of the CSR bucket. And if it gets into the CSR bucket, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much you can give. There's only so much you can donate. There's only so many NGOs you can support. And the, the idea here is how much can we move things into the capitalism bucket? Uh, because it, but capitalism means making money. So the other thing I sh you need to say about uh, creating shared value is it's business specific. There's no formula that applies across all companies. It's not a one size fits all. You know, a pharma company thinks differently than a mining company, thinks differently than Federal Express, thinks differently than Marriott. Uh, it, it, it's business specific because capitalism is business specific. Talk a little bit about you developed the concept and I think you've developed particularly three Three areas of, right. of where CS where companies can practice Good. CS. Yes. Can, uh, you, can you can you talk a bit absolutely. about those, those areas? The, the idea is that the the from all the work we've done and all the uh, companies we've worked with over the years, there seems to be kind of three buckets here. One has to do with the product itself, and what features or or needs the product is is actually meeting, um, and the customers that the company is seeking to serve. And, and the shared value idea says, well, there's a many social dimensions that can be embodied in a product and and there's often customers whose needs are that have not been served that that are, are available so there's the product opportunity the the second opportunity has to do with uh, what I call the value chain the the way the company actually conducts this business that has to do with the supply chain and procurement and operations and logistics uh, and and customer service and so forth and uh, again if, if we look at that uh, uh, value chain with a kind of a shared value perspective, uh, again, we open up new opportunities to save energy, save packaging, uh, have uh, uh, more beneficial impacts on our suppliers that benefit the, them and, 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 their, and their employees. Uh, and then the third bucket has to do with uh, what I call a cluster. Uh, that is the businesses and, and, and institutions around a company. Uh, any company uh, doesn't do everything inside the company. It depends on lots of other organizations to do their job well in order to be productive and efficient and grow its business. And, and, and the third kind of opportunity in, in shared value is, is to think about that ecosystem around the company. And, uh, and the better that ecosystem is, the more effective and competitive the company can be. So those are the three buckets. Uh, we find that most companies can discover 
uh, some new opportunities in each of those areas. A great example I like to use, and it really illustrates the distinction between CSR and CSV, um, is the whole way by which you procure uh, agricultural commodities uh, from, uh, particularly from small farmers. Now, the, the CSR approach to low incomes of small farmers, the CSR approach is fair trade. Pretty much everybody in this room has probably bought a fair trade product. Fair trade is about making sure that those poor farmers get an adequate price for their crop. Do the farmers have to, and, and, and that's being good. It's fair for those farmers to get an adequate price for their crop. We're being good by making sure that they get an adequate price for their crop. And yes, that'll improve the incomes of the farmers. This, but, but that's not a sustainable solution. That's just redistribution. That's, that's, that's paying more for the same thing. That's, 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 just, that's just passing income from one party to another. This other model of procurement uh, is, is very different. It says if you act as a capitalist, if you're a smart buyer, if you work more closely with your supplier, if you help your supplier improve, that allows tremendous improvements in the farmer's income. The farmer can increase their yield, they can increase their quality, they get higher prices, and you raise their income not by charity, not by being a good corporate citizen, but you actually raise their income by being a better capitalist. It's a win-win. We are. It's profitable. We're running quite short of time. A couple, we have a couple more questions. First of all, how does a, how does a financial institution go about creating shared value? You could argue, I'd be cynical for a moment, and say that you know maybe a great idea is to develop something called a subprime loan, where you go out and uh, uh, you uh, you seek people who are unable to get regular access to financial mm -hmm. markets, and you create these wonderful products, and then great. maybe you securitize them, and who knows? But I mean, I'm being obviously it's a great, I'm it's being a great, flippant, but what, it's a what great is example. it's a big issue for financial yeah. institutions? What do they do? Well, I think you know, I think I think you, your example is a wonderful example of this was a product that was not good for many of the customers who bought it. So here's an industry that made money, you know, in a way that actually was was potentially harmful for their customer. Final question: What are the what are the policy implications here? I mean, a lot of what you're talking about yep. seems to be uh, on that frontier between government mm -hmm. government's role in an economy and, and, and the private sector's role yep. in the economy. What what should I mean? Should there be tax incentives to encourage companies to to, to do this? Should there be areas that the government should say, no, no, this is our area yep. of social responsibility? Well, I think first of all, there's a, a big idea here is that government and NGOs will be much more successful at what they are seeking to do if they can enable shared value on the part of the private sector. Uh, and that often requires either skills or platform investments or uh, other sorts of, of sort of pre-competitive investments that will then allow business to kind of go at this uh, shared value stuff. If we can get capitalism to work, we get some tremendous benefits. Number one, it's scalable. We can do it at infinite scale. Uh, number two, it pays for itself. It doesn't require donations. It doesn't require philanthropy. Uh, number three, it's kind of dispassionate. If, if you're not creating a benefit that funds itself, then, then, it's, then it's not worth doing. You know? So um, uh, the, the, uh, I think that if we want to change the attitude of our, the public to business, it's going to be based on what we in business do, what we achieve, what we accomplish. And this is a way of getting businesses thinking about that question. Michael, we have remarkably, and given we cover a lot of ground, I could cover so much more, but remarkably and unfortunately we've run out of time. But I, please, you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking Michael Porter.